the HX E61 group head is familiar on so many machines, but how do you get the most out of it? Stick about and I'll give you all my hot tips. Hey everyone, I'm Luke and welcome back to the Artista YouTube channel where we guide you through all things coffee and so you don't miss out on any of our latest videos when we put them up, make sure you do like, subscribe and hit the bell and you'll be notified when we pop up our latest video. Today we are looking at HX machines. They're super popular, they're everywhere uh, in a whole range of different products, but how do you get the best out of them? Well, stick about and I want to show you all these little tips that we've got. So the first thing to talk about is what is a HX E61 style group head. You'll see this E61 build on a whole range of different machines that come out of Italy. This is a quick mill Rubino, um, it would be also on an ECM, could be on a Giotto Rocket, uh, even the brand new San Remo Cube has this exact same head um, with the lever arm. So it's very common, but what, what does it actually do and how does it work? So you can see how the group handle fits straight in and this head is really hot, so you wouldn't want to touch it. And you've got your lever on the side, which is a cam mechanism. And simply, as you lift it up, water comes into the head. And as you go down, it'll actually use the exhaust and take any back pressure and put it down the drip tray. If you've obviously got the handle in, that will actually put water straight onto the bed of coffee. But there's a little bit more you need to know about how that works and how we can make the most of it. So, Come over here and I'll show you one of these which is totally pulled apart and it'll help me explain it better to you. So here's some of the parts. I just thought I'd pull them out and show you. And if we start from the top, we've basically got um, a couple of nuts. Um, and in here is actually a little restrictor which changes the pressure that's coming onto the water. This whole piece is called the mushroom. Um, then we have a spring which comes down to our first piston essentially, um, which holds the pressure in the top head. So that's how that works in there. Then we have a cam and you can see the shape of that cam. Um, that would normally sit into a housing there. There is another piston which would close the bottom of that housing and then below that there is another exhaust and there's another little spring that normally fits in there. That was actually upside down. So as you're activating that lever it's pushing this piston up and allowing water to come into the coffee. Then as you come back to the middle, essentially you've created in the middle of this, um, where the cam is, a pressure of hot water. And you can allow that to soak onto the coffee or you can exhaust it straight away if you want to. So that allows you to do a few things which I'm gonna show you practically when we're um, brewing coffee. Now that's sort of like a pre-infusion. Um, it's more like a gentle reducing of pressure pre-infusion but I'll show you that a bit more. So essentially, you're basically activating water to come in or water to go out, either to coffee or to the exhaust. The key thing to remember about a HX machine is how it gets the hot water to the actual uh, mushroom and the group head. So with a HX machine, you can basically get a coffee within five or six minutes once it's heated up and you've got steam but essentially this whole mechanism is still cold and your group handle's cold. So it gets its heat by a siphon um, thermo effect that actually happens with these two pipes that go straight into the mushroom. And if we had a boiler, let's say there, this is actually um, in the bottom of the boiler and this one is about halfway up through the boiler. And basically, really easy, keeping it simple, Hot water basically siphons itself around and around continually when the machine isn't even uh, turned on with the pump pressure. So naturally, it's just siphoning around, the water is sitting in a hot water bath and essentially creating um, a thermo, thermo sort of water flow into that head. Now that's not gonna happen if you're gonna try and make a coffee within the first six or seven minutes. It does take a bit of time for this action to, to start and to then um, ensure that whole front E61 head is actually up to a perfect temperature. So giving that a bit more time, um, my tip is wait about 15 minutes with your handle in the actual machine um, and naturally let that handle um, get hot and the front head get hot and then you're ready to brew. 
So in a few other videos, we talk about the quality of the water and the health of your machine. Uh, because this is continually cycling water around and around, if you've left that on, you may get a bit of a buildup of calcium, lime, and scale on that mushroom. So if you wanna know what water quality is like that's going onto your coffee, removing that mushroom and having a look at it would be the first part to look at. Um, this is actually a ceramic one. Um, that's actually from a Giotto uh, rocket machine. Um, they used to be a brass with a chrome plate, um, but now a lot of them are becoming a stainless steel. Definitely the stainless steel lasts the longest um, because the brass and the chrome plate was basically coming off over time if you had any sort of buildup or corrosion happening in there. So um, yeah, a couple of different types of those. Um, really, it doesn't affect the flavor of the water, but it does affect um, the long-term health of your actual machine. So coming a bit closer, and this machine is heated up. It's nice and hot. Uh, we've had a handle in there, but it is warm on the handle, but you can see there's this huge moisture buildup on there. So make sure that that shows that it's hot, but you definitely want to dry that and keep it clean before you make your first coffee. We don't want that water to affect what's happening. All right, so we're gonna give that a bit of a clean out. So it's clean, dry, and hot, then it's ready for our ground coffee. Okay, so the other thing we need to consider is because that siphon uh, thermo uh, water effect is happening, the water is passing through a bed of water and then it's going through a bit of the steam. Now to get steam, we have to be up at around 120 degrees. So that pipe essentially can be superheating the water that is actually in that siphon effect. So a lot of people um, don't flush the head. You may have heard of that term before, but you can see under here, if we have a nice close up, you might see a lot of steam that comes out. All right, oh yeah, a bit of steam coming out, but sometimes you'll see a real huge amount of steam coming through there because it has been built up over time. And you don't want that to be the first super hot amount of water going onto your coffee bed. So you've got to flush that first to get the water flowing because that's actually introducing new fresh cold water into that um, siphon chain flow that we have. It's going to be better oxygenized, uh, oxygen, oxygenized? It's going to be better oxygenated uh, water um, rather than stale water that's been overheated and continually you know, going through that cycle. So, Flushing gets the temperature better on the head, but also gives you that fresher, nice water into your coffee for your espresso. So I'm gonna do two different types of extractions for you. Really simply, pop the handle in, and we're just going to extract coffee straight up. So we're not doing anything different other than activating that water which is coming straight in to the head. You can hear the pump pressure really starting to ramp up. We've got a nice thin little mouse tail that's happening. Um, it's at full nine bar pressure on that as well, which is great. And it's trying to make its way through evenly with that water through the actual coffee puck. So if we had our recipe, I don't wanna to get too much into that at the moment, but whatever the recipe is, and we were gonna shut that off, that is the kind of shot that we're gonna end up with. It's got a good crema. It's just one color all the way across the top of it. Um, you know, definitely a good amount of, of crema there and it does smell like nice coffee. There's no, no doubt about it. When we remove our head, we obviously want to flush so we don't have any of that coffee ground left on there. But I want to show you what I like to do in terms of a bit of a pre-infusion. So let me just get another handle and we'll make another coffee. Okay, so I'm gonna load in another handle. It's the same amount of coffee straight after the other one. Now, what I like to do is inc introduce a little bit of water first, and then I'm gonna stop because we've built some pressure up inside this head, and essentially, because it was at nine bars, it's now decreasing down to nothing, essentially, in that head. Obviously, I've done this for a long time, but I would go on and off, on and off, and then on again. And basically, we've added a few different amounts of water there through different levels of the coffee. And I'm gonna stop this off nice and early because I wanna show you what's happening. It's really easy to see that we get a lot more sugars and caramelization happening in those shots. 
So for me, getting the first part of that extraction right, getting that really rich flavor in that first, basically 15 mil, um, is gonna make a much better espresso overall. If you've got a coarser grind, that little bit of pre-infusion is gonna allow that puck to expand and brew easier. Um, especially if you're using pre-ground coffee, this would help you get a much better coffee. So what you've got to keep in mind if you are going to do some sort of pre-infusion, you're basically oversaturating the coffee uh, earlier and taking more of that out. Um, so you can't generally run as long a shot that you would when you don't do pre-infusion. Your time will run longer, but we don't want to get more volume. So if you're going to do pre-infusion, and let's say you've got 22 grams of coffee in your basket. This is actually only the 18 that, that comes standard with these um, a range of HX machines from Quick Mill. Um, you want to reduce your recipe down a little bit. So if we're going to put 18 grams in um, instead of 36 grams out, I'll probably go 32 grams with a pre-infusion and that'll be really sweet, really syrupy on that first part of the extraction. And then we're not going to get that tail end uh, fast running shot with more bitterness coming through. So my final tip is make sure that your HX machine is in good working order. It is pretty common for this handle here to get a little bit squeaky. And it's because you've got a brass um, cam running onto the brass shaft here and basically they end up squeaking. Now, if that's going to wear out, you won't be increasing or decreasing these pistons enough to get the right amount of water in. So you want to make sure that you get that serviced. If any of these rubber O-rings are basically deteriorated or hard, they won't seal properly. So even though you think you're putting the right amount of pressure on top of your coffee, it's actually probably coming out your exhaust or one of the overflows in there uh, for the pump. So you're actually not providing nine bars of pressure to your coffee bed if your machine's not working effectively. So, any noise, any leak, just take it straight to the shop and get them fixed. The other thing to do is to care for your HX machine the best you can. If you're gonna turn it off, make sure that you get all the water out of your head. And you can do that quite simply by turning the machine off and opening up the cam. Then we're not leaving water sitting in there and in that siphon, um, the thermo siphon that's happening. We're basically taking that all out right now. That's going to fix the water cycle for your coffee. But then you've got your boiler as well. If you want to make sure that you're looking after the outside part of your HX machine, make sure you pop a jug under and then just take all that water out. That's going to keep going till you get about, um, this is a 1.8 litre boiler, so you're going to get about 900 to a litre of water in here. It'll start to steam and then depressurize your machine from the steam tap. So the next time when you turn that machine on, it'll take that full one liter of fresh water back into the machine, and that'll make sure that you're getting really good quality um, clean steam and really good quality water that is high in oxygen, oxygen um, and not full of minerals that have been built up from all those times you left the machine on in the past. So thanks guys, I hope that's helped you um, get a few extra tips about how to make a better coffee with a HX machine with the E61 group head. Um, they're everywhere, they last for ages, and they're really easy to service. So if you're looking for a machine uh, at a great price point, I'd highly recommend looking at any of the brands out there that have this kind of look. You won't be disappointed. Thanks very much for watching guys. We'll catch you next time. Have a good one. Cheers.